Hello, I don't know if you hear well us or no? Yes? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm Natalia from uh, Dior Men. I work uh, in the, with Kim Jones, the creative director at Dior Men, and is the, yeah, I'm doing the, um, let's say, the sustainable, head of sustainable design there. And all this start taking part of that um, designer, and I, we think that this is the key for build all the construction for how we should do a sustainable like fashion and to create the new normal. And uh, we have a uh, oh, the great opportunity to make the collaboration like with Parley with Cyril that we started to talk like two years ago, uh, or even a bit more how how we could do better, no? how we could do uh, the real, uh, not just a collection, we want to do more than that, and we wanted to give more value and more like, uh, yeah, just to give something back to nature no? For, with our actions. And I think, uh, yeah, we, um, our, our goals at Dior is like to, to do this, no? to what is the, the, the create the new normal for the normal, the way we think to be normal, no? And we, it was amazing that we could do like this, uh, this collaboration together to transform all this material that we, th we think that there is so many things that we can contribute and to make better and to give a, a back like a, a bit of education for the people when you buy a product, to know what that you buy and like it's not only a, a design, it's a, we care, of course, what is important for us is the, the quality, the, um, the fashion, the, the design, and, uh, and of course, like uh, with the, this parlay and Dior in this uh, beach capsule that we made, we wanted to make our first step, not only to do this um, like a capsule, just really to make uh, the steps to make better every day. And even we know we can do 100%, everything is not only a transformation of the material, you can use whatever fabric, but you can, uh, what we try to make is how we can transform like uh, with the plastic together with Parley uh, to create the same way that we work at Dior in the same craft, in the same quality and luxury way, no? That, it uh, sounds very easy, no? but it was very difficult. And it was a very, very long journey to do uh, like this, to, uh, to achieve just a, a nylon or a chinel, I will die and uh, just by one by one the, the feel and to get this, the final result like we wanted to do at Dior, no? it was uh, like a, a, a lot of pro and contrast that we learn a lot for the future uh, collection that we are doing. And um, yeah, it's really like uh, for us, it's, uh, oh, it's amazing that we can uh, do normal things for uh, transforming using the technology and uh, and of course like for Kim is let's say like it was very important like to give a to have more a background to have a plus to because he really loved nature or how he grew up and uh, I think with Cyril uh, Parley was like the really uh, the best step that to uh, to can achieve there no the a sustainable connection that the uh, is a uh, no, only like just to make clothes, no? You need to give something more on that. Yeah, do you want to tell everyone more about the collection, the material that you've used, the creative vision behind it, um, as well as like how your teams were able to work together? Yes, but we were like, um, we were the whole time working together with the team of Cyril. Not experiment, but really like a total different way of working for us because was, we didn't count in certain things. Like you need to know how much for just to make um, like a uh, nylon or silk with nylon, silk polyester, or like to make all this mixed material. You need to know how much plastic you need to have. Then you need to buy in advance the quantity. You need to t test the quality, and uh, was really a big journey to achieve the qualities that we are looking for. Mm. And it took the, the contract was like, took us very, very long to that all the designers, because they think like, like a designer is very difficult. It's not only you just use the fabric and you make a collection. You need to feel like it's the right hand, how you work every day. And uh, we were like uh, with the team, like uh, and with the fabric supplier, try to achieve like, what is the right hand that we, we do know? And, and then we develop, let's say, for uh, we have a, we want to develop 
maybe 10 fabrics and in then we only have four or five mm -hmm. but this was a big big challenge even just we were a bit disappointed oh we're only gonna have this fabric but actually was amazing to have these fabrics because this make us now for the future step how we have deal with the another qualities the way of thinking but these are really like a it's a total way a different way that we work let's say in the normal collection no i mean it's very individual mm -hmm. and that i think that was the we were really engineering together we exactly. were building together and and we bring palais has a network of suppliers and we know how to make yarn and to make fabric and all these things but dior has a very specific focus on the how a, a, a fabric is made and, yes. and and what you want to achieve and what not only the looks are but but the hand and and the, the whole like how it f uh, falls and everything mm -hmm. so it was a rocket science project it's actually easier for us to make a mm. spacesuit for nasa <laughs> than to work with the ore <laughs> and the interesting piece though is that we learned from each other's in this project a lot you could not learn that in meetings or in conference no. or in school. The collaboration project itself unlocked a lot of knowledge. And I think that is the beauty for us working with um, LVMH also as a group is to really understand how much knowledge it takes to make luxury product on the level of a Dior, yes. right? It's not, I mean, we all know, but the world out there doesn't know. Luxury item doesn't mean just a price tag. It means craftsmanship. It means artis artisans yes. working on it. There is so much in there. And I think that's what defined our process. And I'm extremely proud what came out of it and what we learned yes. for future collections. Totally, totally. No, because it was really like a, like a let's say, a big a master workshop that you do yourself to make the products from A to Z for the trims to the fabric to the accessories, then there's some, some work we fail that we, we, in the last minute, we have to drop it, it doesn't work, but it's, it's all these uh, steps for, uh, let's say, that we learn for, for how we, we should, how we should add for the next step. Like we, you need, the more difficult, let's say, is to have the quality, the hand, the, or the luxury, how we work at Dior, but the timings. We work so fast in the collections. We need more and more time to develop a fabric or a total collection yet, uh, uh, with a sustainable way because there is uh, sometimes, yeah, till you achieve all these points from, uh, from all the products, not only the fabric, mm -hmm. trims or accessories for the shoes, for the bags. And was, uh, yeah, it's how we saw like, okay, we need to stop certain things to just to uh, put more the energy in another direction, like maybe just in the, in the fabrics and in the trims and for continue investigating because in then it's like a laboratory, let's say. Uh, and we, it's what we're doing now, no? like a study case for all the pieces, even like what we do with the Parley, we do at Dior for our essential collections to, to make the same uh, sustainability way, point of view, you know, like what do, uh, to make the, no, nothing is 100%, but to make the maximum and keep on, keep on. No? And I think that's the big difference between Dior, for example, and other partnerships we have, um, is, the, is the quality demand, really, and the, the precision down to the detail. I mean, we are putting out millions and millions of products. I think Palais is this year putting out 100 million products, but they are mass produced, right? They are like sporting goods and whatever. And in comparison, I have to say, you were very fast. Because, I mean, it, it took us a year, technically, yeah. in making all the materials from the moment yes. it really started. Yes, totally. No, and it was like uh, the job was from everybody. It was from the CEO that he agreed to take the project because it's the thing, like it's still a fashion house. You need to do uh, money on that. And then you need to put a lot of energy to that to change a lot of process. Yeah. That is a lot about that, to change the process. And it was great that they say, Let's, I don't know how we're gonna, where we're gonna finish, but let's try and we do it with the, with so, Arle, no? <laughs> yeah, so you're on your way of like changing how fashion can give back to nature and then generally sustainability. What do you think fashion role, at, fashion's role at large is to give back to nature and also kind of like, yeah, 
be more sustainable in the future? Like, how do you think, like, how important fashion is for that? And, like, how do you navigate that? Like, both, like, working together on both levels, how do you navigate that as a designer for the or man, like, a head of sustainable wow. fashion? I would say, like, uh, the most important is the mind <laughs> and the energy in your heart. Purpose. Because, yeah. yeah, purpose. And, of course, that uh, in, the, um, in the clothes, you have to think, like, when you start to design or how I do with my colleagues, it's like, you need to know what is going on too, because if you don't know, you can't do nothing. Maybe you have an idea, but you block. It's very important to share all the knowledge, the technology that you can use, and uh, and of course, when you start to create the product, like it's not to think for minute one, like with my fabric, if I do with this production way or just for the trims from all at to set to make request yourself, like. Uh, how can I do better? No, it's always like, and you know that the, the it's like we went back in years when uh, with certain treatments and other way, but I think now it's like an explosion. No, it's so many, there's many places to do, but we have to be realistic that then it, there is a production behind, mm -hmm. and it's all this is the difficulty when you have a small thing you can do, but the most important is to think as well like how you be realistic in your way of design that. Uh, and then you can achieve the production because in then if you just reach the half process then is why we work from uh, the whole team like i said before from the CEO, for the patron maker for the marketing team with the production it's like we start with the parlay to make a, how we our first contact was to make a workshop with everybody from all the departments just to hear like uh, what the was parlay no and mm -hmm. it's just you need to a bit shake in the head and every just do normal that you do every day in your in your daily life to do the same at the world no how how you can improve all this mm -hmm. i would say I so on, on one side, fashion is the space industry for material innovation because the challenges, I mean, I'm talking fashion, I'm not talking fast fashion, I'm talking fashion, fashion, right? It's the space industry in the sense of impossible requests often has to happen fast, it can't really fail, it can't fail. Mm. And um, it's new territory for us, right? Always. And for them, it's new territory. So that's the experimental piece that's actually opening up that material later for lots of other people because once it's mastered it's there mm. the second aspect is when you do something when you change something when you start from scratch with a new material when you're innovating it costs more money right it costs it more money exist. and um, you have to get new tooling there's a lot there and often you can't do big volumes right away so in fashion there is no problem to make a hundred jackets right in sportswear already it is a problem Right, so in automotive there is a problem. In, in there is a lot of here you can run smaller runs, yes. no problem. And the third is um, price. And I want to highlight something here: the collection was sold for thirty yeah. percent more money. It was the a premium price range was elevated for another thirty percent, and it was selling very well. Yes. No, what was great that I cut you a bit was that the when was the the presentation in April of the collection, like everybody was not even in the window and everybody wanted to have it because it was a, a sustainable collection making with the parley. And they they never really talk about the fabrics, the, but they never talk really about the product. They talk more about the that was a sustainable capsule made with, uh, with with all the innovation with Parley that we could do with the fabrics. And I think this was the, uh, the great. And they sell so much, you no? Know? Like, yes, they want to, to be part as well. And this is the education key too, that uh, that is important as well. Not only the clothes, like you had always a plus, like is the, like Cyril said before, there's so many things that we learn, like is the education in your team, the education for everybody that, uh, in the in the school, like in the end, it's like you, every day, you know, that have to do these steps to. And, and and I think that is what Palais has to offer, not only for things that we invented now, the ocean plastic concept, but for any other material innovator. We the brand now stands for change. It's not any more important what the material is, it's a statement of Palais. Yeah. It's like we're gonna do the best we can with that material, and we're gonna work with the best people. That means. It can easily be a material made from algae or from carbon dioxide. It doesn't matter. It's more like, hey, we're trying here hard. And yes, it costs you more money. But that's, 
you want you were going to be one of the first ones to have a product made like that and that's the i think that's the promise that we are making to people out there and radical transparency on the other side about what is possible and what is not yes mm -hmm. and to yeah to make like a normal what a new normal let's say no yeah, the new I normal think this is a good final word do you want to open up to the audience for any questions they might have for you guys please shoot so, yeah so weird. there's someone around with a mic so just raise your hands mm. and we're happy to take questions if there are any but i feel like if you're quiet there might not be any okay Hi. over here we have a question okay thank you so much this is amazing so oh, what was you. yeah we can't can we yeah. We need headphones. <laughs> we can't hear them. <laughs> yeah. Ah, like this, yes. Better. What was the biggest challenge in the collaboration? What was the biggest challenge? The biggest challenge. The, uh, well, the biggest challenge were, was a lot of uh, bigger challenges, let's say, no, to the time. Time is, uh, an, uh, yeah, to achieve all in the short time that we fashion it so fast. We do so many collections and to cast, uh, we have to push a lot in time to have the, for the material to have the fabric, but yeah, this is, they say, in the fashion industry, how we work now is still too fast, still very fast. Timing to achieve, uh, because then the, the final result, we were like, it was amazing, you know, but time is the more difficult. And for us, it's being a time machine. <laughs> like, stop. Make out of one minute, ten, an hour, yeah. a day. So like stretching this little time window into the max. Mm. And I think that is the, the true, and another part of our role is you have companies that have processes, very tight processes, optimized down to the inch. And changing something takes, again, time. So we have to do a lot on our side to prepare that the moment a company comes in can actually infuse. You think a year was yeah, well, long for, in yeah, other cases, we needed we five years, right? I mean, to do eyewear, we needed three years. I mean, it's, it, it, there's a lot of preparation. It's like a preparation cook that kind of prepares the ingredients and, and prepares the kitchen so when the, when the chef comes in, they can just cook, you know, even if it takes a little yeah. longer, you know, than usual for them. No, and we learn a lot now for the future collection. We learn on that, that we, we work in advance to catch this time that we are ready to have, because we want to have the best result, you know? But let's say is that. Hmm. More questions? I think if there, oh, yeah. there is one. Hello. Can you hear me? No, you can't hear me. Um, okay, first. Sign language. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I just wanted to, I really loved what you were saying about um, that you want to phase out plastic use. But obviously the reality is that we still have plastic waste in the environment and you still have to kind of work with that in a circular way. Yeah. So what do you say to people who argue that you're encouraging the use of plastic, especially if you've got it in textiles where obviously it's still going to be washed and still going into the environment? What's, how do you yeah. respond to that? Hmm. So first of all, I'm responsible for the witch hunt against plastic because I call plastic a design failure from day one and the whole plastic industry, including the recycling industry, uh, hated me for that. The truth though is that if you want to change the foundation on which our life on this planet is built right now, which is plastic, fossil fuel, and tons of other things. I mean, right now, we, I wouldn't even see the carpet. That's plastic. You don't, you don't know, but it is, right? The, the, the speaker is plastic. I'm running around plastic. I'm flying with a plane that is plastic. I mean, we are plastic people. We are plastic addicts, right? So. And that's the difficult, but also the interesting part of the messaging. It's like, yes, plastic is bad. We have to get rid of it, and I want that. Primary objective, get plastic out of the system. Oh, and actually, I can't say that too loud. It takes 20 years. <laughs> um, so yes, the ultimate goal is to get rid of plastic that is made from fossil fuel with chemicals that are destructive. The challenge is, what is better? Do we know? Oh, there's this amazing cactus leather. Oh, is that better? Are we throwing in little things that actually make, have the same effect than when you're actually buying a faux uh, fur? You know, at this point in time, we are in 
campaigning mode. We are in a revolution. We are in rebel mode. That means we are screaming around and we are asking for things. We don't really know how, we, how to actually solve them. So the true solution today that you can walk out here with is either, either material that you can buy that is really 100% natural or that can explain to you what it is or at least you know it's recycled which is also not easy to verify. I mean, there are so many things that we provoke. Now people come back and say, okay, you're celebrating, you, you, we have this trademark ocean plastic, we established that as a premium category, which opened up a total new category for materials in general. Yeah. So where's that material coming from? Can you show us? So we actually have, since five years, a documentation process in place where we film every cleanup. We know every person out there who cleans. We now have tracers we're putting into the material so we can actually trace back where it was collected, processed. So building a transparent supply chain, 100% extreme transparent, goes hand in hand with questioning the material itself. And plastic today is bad. And just because I'm picking it up on a beach doesn't make it better. It's shit material. It's toxic. It's not ready for a circle economy because it's creating damage but leaving it out there where it breaks down or people burn it animals eat it is worse so the act of removing it the act of taking care of the problem to confronting yourself with that problem that is extremely good and it's the preparation for the next phase because imagine when I come now back and I say listen we actually figured out how to turn whatever algae into a replacement, I already know whom to call. I'm not starting from scratch, we're gonna just make a next product. So Palais becomes this gate for material innovation. The truth though is that we need one missing link and I announced that on Sunday night. We finally have the money to start an institute, a big, global international space station of an institute that has the people that can actually look at the science of things, look at the materials, look at the future materials and make a material strategy because it doesn't exist. The same way we don't really have an anti-climate change strategy is that it's not there. We have goals but not a strategy. So what we need right now is a plan, a true plan and then a project management plan where we can say oh in five years or in 10 years or in 12 we can achieve that, today we can do that, and so on. Because right now we're beating ourselves up and social media is very, very good for that because everybody can blurb something out without context. So I think this is a good ending. Yeah, this is, you gave everyone good food for thought and something to be excited about in the future. So thank you guys for coming. Um, thank you very much, everyone, to coming to this talk. Also, thank you to Nina and Alexander Capelli for making this talk happen. And yeah, enjoy the day, enjoy the rest of the expo. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thanks for listening in. Thank you.